Hello everyone, welcome back to my general chemistry mini lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we will talk about the VSEPR theory and uh, the geometry of the molecules and the hybridization of the central atoms. Okay, this theory is called a VSEPR, stand for the valence shell electron pair repulsion. This theory is to predict the molecular geometry, also electron groups geometry. The theory assumes the electron groups around the central atoms will arrange themselves to minimize, that's a keyword, minimize re repulsion from each other. Why? Because they have same charge. All the electrons have negative charge. The electron groups include a single bond, double bond, triple bond, or long pair. Okay, so that's all count as electron groups. We will have tons of example in this lecture. So we'll, I will use the red color to show the central atom. And the blue color shows the electron group. Now, if we have two electron group, then to minimize the repulsion of these two electron group will be linear, apparently, okay? So that will be linear. This linear is the geometry of the electron groups. So this central atom will be sp hybrid if there are two electron groups. If there are three electron groups, then it should be the trigonal planar. And then that is the way to minimize repulsion of the three electron groups. And the central atom will be sp2 hybrid. If there are four electron groups, then the best way to minimize repulsion will be tetrahedral. And this central atom will be sp3 hybrid. If there are five electron groups, the geometry of the electron groups will be trigonal by pyramidal. And this central atom will be sp3d hybrid. If there are six electron groups, then that will be octahedral as the geometry of the electron groups and the central atom will be sp3d2 hybrid. I will talk about those one by one and give you examples. First, the carbon dioxide geometry is linear because the central atom carbon has two electron groups. And if there are two electron groups, the electron groups geometry should be linear. And since there's no long pair on the central atom, so the molecular geometry will be the same as the electron group's geometry. That's also linear. Okay, so although they are the same, but this two type of geometry, you have to be careful, okay? So electron group's geometry and the molecular geometry, they could be the same when there's no long pair on the central atom, but they could be different if they are elect not long pairs on the central atom. Now, this is the carbon, sp hybrid carbon because two electron groups. And then if we look at the carbon oxygen bond, it is a polar bond. How do you know that? Oxygen electron activity is 3.5, the carbon is 2.5. The difference is one. Usually if the electron activity difference is more than 0 0.4, we can say it's a polar covalent bond. So we can use the dipole moment to show this di uh, polar covalent bond. So the arrow pointed to the more electron active atom. We have another polar bond in the same molecule. And although you have two polar bond in this carbon dioxide, but they have exactly linear opposite. So they cancel each other, okay? Dipole moment actually is a vector. So they have direction. So these two dipole moment exactly cancel each other. So carbon dioxide is a non-polar molecule. It's a non-polar molecule with a polar bond. Look at another example, boron trifluoride. Now, this central atom is boron, has three electron groups. That's a single bond, single bond, single bond. Like electron groups. And then electron groups geometry will be trigonal planar. And central atom has no long pair. So the molecule's geometry is also same as the electron groups geometry, trigonal planar. Now, look at the polarity of the bond between boron and fluorine.
RNC electron activity is 2.0, fluorine is 4.0, so the difference two. So it's very polar covalent bond. Okay, and boron is it is sp2 hybrid. So I forgot to talk about that. So because three electron groups sp2 hybrid. Now the bond is a polar bond. You have three polar bond. You can draw three dipole moment. And since this is the trigonal planar, so it, it's cancel each other. The molecule is actually non-polar molecule, although you have a polar bond here. Another example, now methane. Methane has a central atom carbon with four electron groups. So the geometry of electron groups will be tetrahedral. And you can draw the 3D uh, structure like this, like that's the model. And if you see this, just a single line, normal, that means there's a bond in the plane. And this is outer plane, that's outer plane. When you see wedge, that's pointed to you. Dash is away from you. Okay, so that's the way you draw the tetrahedral 3D. And uh, electron groups geometry is tetrahedral. Since the carbon, the central atom has no long pair, so the molecular geometry is the same, tetrahedral. Okay, and this is nonpolar molecule because the carbon hydrogen bond are nonpolar, so there's no dipole moment. Um, that it's not pure nonpolar bond, but the electron activity difference is small, 0.4, so you can say it's nonpolar. Now let's look at another example, ammonia. Ammonia has a central atom nitrogen and there are four electron groups, a long pair with three single bond. The four electron groups, geometry will be tetrahedral. And the molecule will be different with the tetrahedral because the central atom nitrogen has a long pair. So when we look at the molecule, we can only see those atoms attached to the central atom. We cannot see the long pair. That's why the geometry of the molecule is actually trigonal pyramidal, not tetrahedral. Tetrahedral is the electron group's geometry because of the long pair. Okay. And the central atom nitrogen is sp3 hybrid. Now look at the polarity of those nitrogen-hydrogen bond. Because nitrogen is uh, more electronegative than hydrogen, the electronegativity difference is 3 minus 2.1 is 0 0.9. So that's polar covalent bond. The three dipole moment is all pointed to nitrogen. One, two, three. And there's a net dipole moment. It's like this. So it is a polar molecule with polar covalent bond. There are three polar bond and one with a whole molecule with a net dipole moment. Look at the water. The water's central atom is oxygen and there are four electron groups, two long pairs, two single bond. You draw this, this is the Lewis structure. Okay, so you have to follow the rule to draw the Lewis structure. And so if there are four electron groups, then the electron groups should be tetrahedral again. But because there are two lone pairs of the central atom, so the molecular geometry will be bent. You cannot see this two lone pair. And the oxygen, again, is sp3 hybrid because there are four electron groups. Okay. Now, the polarity of the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is polar because oxygen is way more electronegative than hydrogen. The electronegativity difference you can calculate, okay? 3.5 minus 2.1 is 1.4. So you have two dipole moment. So there's a net dipole moment of this molecule. So this is another polar molecule with two polar covalent bond. And the molecular geometry is bent. It's different with the electron groups geometry tetrahedral, okay? So you see the molecule is bent. Now look at the phosphorus pentafluoride. We have a central atom as a phosphorus here, five fluorine as a surrounding. We have five electron groups, 
one, two, three, four, five, and electron groups geometry will be trigonal by pyramidal. Okay, it's like trigonal by pyramidal. And since this central atom phosphorus has no lone pair, so the molecular geometry is the same as the electron groups geometry is tri uh, trigonal by pyramidal. The central atom is sp3d hybrid. And then if you look at the each single bond here, they are all polar bond because the electron activity difference. And then since they all cancel each other, so this molecule is non-polar molecule. Even you have a polar bond. Uh, this example sulfur tetrafluoride. Central atom is sulfur. You have five electron groups, four single bond and one lone pair. So five electron groups. And so electron groups geometry, it is trigonal by pyramidal again. But the molecule itself will be seesaw because the central atom has one lone pair. So molecular geometry will be seesaw. Why it's called a seesaw? Because lone pair will be here. The lone pair in the trigonal by pyramidal will be the equatorial, cannot be axial here. Okay. So if you look at this molecule, if you twist it like this, that was like seesaw. Okay. So the molecular geometry it is a seesaw. Now the central atom so far is sp3d because five electron groups. Okay. Hybrid is sp3d. Polarity, the sulfur fluorine bond is also polar bond again because of electron activity difference. And you have a four dipole moment. These two dipole moment, they are opposite linear, so they canceled. But these two cannot be canceled, so it is a polar molecule with a net dipole moment. So polar molecule. Last example is the sulfur hexafluoride. We have a central atom, the sulfur. We have a six single bond. That's six electron groups. Six electron groups will uh, be octahedral as a geometry. Okay, so electron groups geometry octahedral. And uh, since the central atom has no lone pair, so the molecular geometry is the same, octahedral. Central atom, okay, is sp3d2 if you have six electron groups, okay. The electron, um, uh, the bond between sulfur and, and the fluorine is dipole, uh, is a polar bond. We just saw that in the last slide. So, and in this octahedral, all the dipole moment are canceling each other. So this is non-polar molecule again. I just mentioned sp3d2, right? Okay. So, so this molecule is non-polar molecule, although the bond is polar. Uh, <clears throat> now, actually, one more example here is a xenon tetrafluoride. The xenon tetrafluoride have a central atom is xenon with two lone pair and four single bond. So there are six electron groups. If there are six electron groups, the electron groups geometry will be the octahedral. And for this molecule, since you have two lone pair, the molecular geometry will be different with the ge electron groups geometry. You will not see the long pair, so it will be square planar. So again, whenever you have the long pair, the molecular geometry will be different with the electron groups geometry. The central atom is sp3d2 hybrid. And if you look at the polarity and fluorine, xenon bond is very polar. Okay, you can calculate electron activity. It should be more than 0 0.4. But you have four Dipole moment, they are on the square planar. They cancel each other. Basically, these two are opposite. These two are opposite on the same plane. That's why they cancel each other. So this molecule, it is non-polar molecule. Although you have a four polar bond. Okay. So this is the uh, last example. And so when you study this uh, topic, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, okay? So, good luck.